A White House official says that the U.S. is adjusting its posture in the Middle East as it monitors tensions between Israel and Iran. For analysis, we are joined now by CBS News national security contributor Sam Vinograd for our weekly national security recap. So, Sam, let's just start off. What are Iran's capabilities? Well, the U.S. intelligence community estimates that Iran has access to the largest ballistic missile stockpile in the region. At the same time, Iran and its proxies have a large stockpile of cruise missiles, rockets, and other forms of aerial projectiles like drones. Now, if we look at Israel, Israel has a sophisticated and multi-layered air defense system that is designed to mitigate those aerial projectiles at various altitudes and at various speeds. Israel has a large arsenal of weapons that it can use to inflict damage in the region as well, and that's exactly why there's such intense diplomacy to try to de-escalate the situation. Now, we know that there are a series of risks to Americans in the region, namely at military facilities and at embassies and consulates. And the U.S. government right now is regularly assessing what additional assets may be needed to protect those Americans overseas and whether to draw down, for example, diplomatic personnel at our embassy and consulate in Israel, our embassy in Lebanon, our embassy in Iraq, and elsewhere throughout the region. That's an ongoing discussion within the U.S. government right now. And what's the threat of a larger escalation? Well, from a global counterterrorism perspective, there are really two buckets of international terrorism threats overseas. First, Iran trains, equips, and funds a vast web of proxies in the region that have a history of attacking uh, the U.S. military and others in places like Iraq, Syria, and elsewhere in the region. We also know, in the aftermath of the ISIS Khorasan attack in Russia just a, shortly ago, that ISIS is capitalizing on that attack to try to inspire more similar kinds of attacks mm -hmm. against the United States and others in um, Europe and around the world. When we come back and look at the homeland, Lana, it is possible, but not that likely, that an international terrorist, a foreign terrorist organization, would try to send operatives here to conduct an attack. What FBI Director Ray said earlier this week is, in fact, that the biggest threat from a foreign terrorist organization to the homeland right now is individuals here in the United States being inspired by what they're seeing overseas, whether it's ISIS or rounding back proxies, and taking action. We had an individual arrested in Idaho earlier this month for pledging allegiance to ISIS, so that's a real focus. And then finally, FBI Director Ray, in testimony this week, said that the number of investigations into domestic terrorism has more than doubled since 2020, and that's primarily individuals with anti-government motivations and racially and ethnically motivated violent extremists. Well, also in Washington this week, several meetings between the U.S. and Japanese leaders took place. How does this partnership impact national security? The Japan state visit was a major advance when it comes to the security and safety of the Asia-Pacific region. President Biden and Prime Minister Kishida were focused on showing a united front in the face of an increasingly aggressive China, and they succeeded. The two leaders announced a series of new initiatives in uh, the military, economic space, and climate domain. And they also welcomed the president of Philippines to Washington for a trilateral summit where they discussed, for example, efforts to bolster security in the contested waters of the South China Sea. So overall, it was a big step forward for security in the Asia Pacific between these three countries. All right, Sam, thank you.